What's up guys? So today I'm going to talk about how to build your own power supply for your heavy duty telescope mount. Now if you've gone out and you've bought yourself that go-to mount and it's really good and it's really heavy and it needs power. So what you're going to do? Well you've got two options. Either you could buy a car booster pack which you could use to power your telescope mount or you could go buy the Skywatcher power tank which is going to probably run you about 100 quid or so or you could do the really cool thing which I did and build your own here we go what do you need to be able to build a booster pack or power pack for your telescope let me go through the main components. Well, you're gonna need a 12 volt barrel socket, the same as what you would use for your computer or your PC, like this one. You're gonna need two 12 volt lead acid batteries also, like this. You're also gonna need a voltage display, like this one. You're also going to need a cigarette lighter socket, just like this one. You're also going to need a DC to DC step down buck converter, like this one. And also two switches, like these. And the fuse to make the whole circuit safe. Finally, once you've gathered up all your components, you're gonna need something to put it all in. I chose to go for an ammunition box. Check this out. Okay, do you wanna see how all this is gonna get wired up? Let's go and take a look at the schematic. Okay, so you've got two batteries. They're both wired up in parallel and they're 12.7 volts, 7.5 amps each. Make sure they're the same battery type and the same, they have the same characteristics because you can't mix up batteries for this. They're going to be wired up in parallel. So that means negative to negative, positive to positive. Okay. When you wire up batteries like this, you're going to double the capacity. So the system's no longer going to be 7.5 amps an hour, but it's going to be 15 amps an hour, which means you're going to be able to run your system for a lot longer. You're going to take a positive cable from the positive side of the secondary battery, run it through the 5 amp fuse, and then from the fuse, fuse to the switch, from the switch to the cigarette lighter, cigarette lighter socket, and then take the negative lead from the cigarette lighter socket and run it back to the negative of the secondary battery. You're also going to have a voltage display. Okay, This is also wired up in parallel, positive to positive, negative to negative. This is going to be used to tell you if you need to charge up your battery or not. Make sure it doesn't drop below 12 volts. You're going to have a DC to DC step down butt converter. This is also wired up in um, parallel, but you're going to take negative to the first battery and then positive to the secondary battery. And the reason why you wire it up like this is to make sure you have equal charge in both batteries, because if you take the negative and you put it to the negative of the secondary battery, and the positive to the positive of the secondary battery, you'll end up charging this battery more than this battery and you'll end up ruining the system. So wire it up like this. You're going to need to be able to set up your butt converter. There's going to be two pots on, on the top of this um, butt converter. One controls the voltage that's going to be giving out the output voltage and the other one's going to control the output current. With regards to current, set it at about 3 amps. With regards to voltage, set it at about 13.6 volts because you want a slightly higher voltage, okay? It's going to depend on your, your, your battery that you choose at the end of the day. So just check up on that and then set it up accordingly. You've got your barrel connector that's going to be used for the charger. I'm going to use a laptop charger. Battery, uh, laptop charger. Um, you might use something else for, I don't know, like a cordless hoover or something like that. Whatever you use, make sure it's going to be 12 to 15 volts and it's going to be at least 5 amps or more than 3 amps at least, okay? 
make sure the cables are are, are are the correct rating okay the wires are the correct rating mine are one millimeter square which means they're rated at eight amps and can supply about nine, 96 watts or something like that off of memory um, don't use skinny wires because they'll overheat they'll end up um, causing fuses to blow and you could end up having a fire or a short or something inside your um, ammunition box any questions just drop me a comment below okay happy to help Don't forget to put a switch between the positive and the positive of the battery from the butt converter because if if you don't have a switch basically there's an LED on the butt converter it stays on and it will end up draining your battery. So whenever you're charging the battery close the switch, charge up the battery once it's finished, turn off the switch, unplug it. Okay welcome back, hope I didn't confuse you with all that. So we're going to take a look at how we actually constructed everything now. Um, in the next couple of clips, I'm going to show you how I basically positioned everything and made notes and stuff like that. I hope you enjoy the video and see you at the end. Okay, it's best to place the batteries inside the actual box and position them how you want them to be when you construct everything at the beginning before you drill any holes or do any wiring. Here you can see me taking the actual measurements and making notes of um, how much room I have inside the actual box. Once I had my notes, I um, went ahead and positioned all the components where I felt they were best suited. So I went and um, drilled all the holes, I decided to drill them and not cut any square holes because cutting square holes are hard so that's one of the reasons why I went for a um, cigarette lighter socket um, voltage display instead of something else. I went and sprayed the box white just to make it look more nicer and um, at this stage I basically put everything into place and started to wire everything up. Once everything was in the box and wired up, I decided to set up the um, butt converter. I basically set it up to 3 amps and about 13.7 volts. Okay, I've wired up my multimeter in line with the... Um, the mount and um, I'm going to measure how much current the actual mount is drawing. So I've got 12.5 volts in the batteries and I'm about to power up the mount. Let's see how much current it draws. So just by powering up the mount, it's running 8 milliamps, just powering it up. Oh, there's point. 0 0.3, 0 0.40, 0 0.39 to 0.40 amps, so just, just under half an amp. I'm going to pretend to uh, align the mount. Okay, so when I uh, activated the mount and it was polar aligning and I was star aligning, it drew about one amp, maybe just over one amp. And right now it's tracking and it's 0 0.63 amps. So that tells me that this power supply has no problem running this mount for probably more than five hours. I should be able to run it for at least 8 hours before I'm going to need a recharge. Let me just um, change the rate and move it with the hand controller and see how much current it actually draws. So just over, just over an amp, you might as well call that an amp. 
mind you this is unloaded so I suspect it may use a little bit more current when there's uh, a weight on it but it's not going to be that much I'm happy with that okay let's switch it off Okay, here's the power, power supply all finished. Got the on and off button here, the voltage display here, and the socket for the mount here. Charges up from here, plug it in, switch it on from there. The display will display how much voltage is actually in the um, battery. Then you're gonna charge it. Plug in the charger here, switch the switch, when it's blue it's still charging, when it turns green it will mean it's fully charged. I've just done this up temporarily because I'm going to do a few more things but I'm going to show you that in a later um, video, I don't want to put everything into this video because it's going to end up being too long, but I'm going to end up putting some um, pulse width modulation control units in there as well to control dew heaters, but I'll do that in a separate video so stay tuned. Well, what did you think? We've come to the end of the video now. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment at the bottom. I look forward to hearing what you guys think.